Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 300 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Yeah, now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it yeah so I did want to even before we started talking about keto on the couch I wanted to mention that yesterday which was Saturday mm -hmm. We put up a video reviewing and doing a giveaway for Keto Farms. Right. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to leave a link right over Rachel's head for Enter that. Enter to win. Yeah, so we're doing a giveaway of the tomato pepper jack, which I love that. By the way, I secretly finished that bag on you. It was really good. It's not a secret if you tell it. I know, but it was really good, and I didn't want to share it, but I'm gonna, I ordered you a whole bag. Okay. So, anyway, at, we put that video up. Uh, ben gave us a coupon code. It's two crazy ketos for 20% off, but that works on their website. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday afternoon, after we put the video up, he's like, oh, by the way, here is another coupon code that could be used on Amazon. That's but unfortunately, we already had the video up. So I put it in the comment section mm -hmm. of that. But in case you didn't see it, if you are interested in Keto Farms, you can go to Amazon.com and get it. I'll leave a link down here below. Mm -hmm. And then you can use the code 20 crazy ketos. Do we multiply? <laughs> well, what Ben said was it, it's the beginning of the coupon code has to start with how much is off oh. and you're getting 20% okay. off. Okay. So if you put the code 20 crazy ketos, um, in the uh, discounts and code section when you go to check out, mm -hmm. you'll get $5 off a three pack of the keto farms. Oh, nice. And it's a, and, and you've got free shipping because Amazon. It's free shipping because it's a prime thing. Now, there is a time limit on that. I don't know how long it is. It's usually a couple of weeks or whatever. So if you're watching this much later on and it doesn't work, I'm sorry. But you do have the other one as well. But it's just nice that you can go through Amazon and get it now. Yeah, so that 20 is crazy neat. ketos on Amazon will get you 20% off of your keto farms order. Very cool. So, and it probably like a lot of the other Amazon coupons where you only get one use. A lot of times in, on Amazon, you can only use a coupon one time. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. So this week has been busy with preparedness. Yes, it has been a hectic week because since like Monday, the media has been driving everybody insane saying like, hey, you're all going to die soon. Well, it's like, we don't know. It's somewhere between you might get rained on to, yeah, like death. Yes. So um, you have to be prepared for everything. But I mean, we've been living in Florida for a long time. I'm a seventh generation Floridian. So... Um, we're just kind of naturally, we take these things seriously, we get prepared, but we don't get crazy about it. We don't start hoarding gas and, and like restricting everyone else's access to water. And no. I mean, you, I think you have to be reasonable with it. Well, for the most part, we usually are prepared. We always have like a stockpile of food in our house, which we had that great stockpile video that we put up yesterday, it was a lot of fun. or this, this morning it went up. Yeah, all about like these are some great keto options to keep in your house that are shelf stable, that you don't need to cook, that will get you by without making you go off track and stuff like that. We already have hurricane shutters. Yeah, which we leave on year round. Well, we leave the back half of our house on year round. You know, people are gonna put like comments down below saying like you shouldn't do that that's dangerous but we have really old windows that let out like the lion's share of our air conditioning yeah they don't they are like old-fashioned crank windows so they don't tighten all the way and worse than the fact that they're thin thin glass and they let the air out but the sun beats on them and it heats up all the it's rooms bad. by like 20 degrees so we live in a cave in the whole back half of the house, but we are getting new windows soon that are supposed to be like keeping all that heat out. They were actually supposed to come and measure next Wednesday, but I don't know if that's happening. Yeah, because the storm has gone from it's going to hit Friday to it's going to hit Saturday to it's coming Tuesday to now it's like Wednesday, I think. As long as, I mean, I really hope that it doesn't hit us. And we've been praying for all those people who have actually met Dorian. Yep. Not a nice person, that Dorian. Um... So yeah, like, cause it's been a very strong hurricane. Yeah. I mean, isn't it like 
supposed to be like a cat five? Right now, as of recording this, it's a category five, so it's like catastrophic. So yeah. I, I hope it doesn't hit anywhere and it just maybe skirts up. We get the outside edges, which is still like some strong rain and some strong like 70 mile an hour winds. And then go out the sea and don't hit anyone. That's what I'd love. So... But it's, it has given us a chance to kind of reevaluate everything we have in the house. What do we need to like move from the back of the, to the pantry to the front of the pantry? What are we short on? Like we found out like, hey, we're kind of short on batteries. Yeah, it's, it's honestly, uh, first of all, it's like spring cleaning for Florida, right? Because Our house is immaculate now. Because you say to yourself, you know what's worse than dirty, smelly laundry? Heat. From a power outage and dirty, smelly laundry. You know what's worse than dust everywhere? Heat and dust everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I we've scrubbed the house and mowed the lawn. I mean, like, you, you, you thinned out the trees. It's been really nice. Everything we should be doing... Well, the thing is, is we just are super busy all the time. So sometimes we don't get to the dusting and like the little detail cleaning. But when you start having this thought of like, I may be trapped in this house for three days. I don't want to be trapped in the house with the dust and the dirt and like, oh my gosh, it needs to be clean. So I vacuumed and like got another animal of, I know of, of hair and we do have our robot vacuum that vacuums every day so it's Exhausted. amazing can you imagine how bad it would be if you didn't have that thing no it actually like gave me like a letter of resignation though it just like handed it to me with its little robot arms like I can't I cannot <laughs> even do this anymore yeah too many pets lady did you see on the news that like you know when we're talking about the hurricane that Publix actually had, was selling hurricane party cakes. Like it was like cakes yes. that had said like go away Dorian and stuff like that. And people are offended by the cakes. Oh my goodness. I think it's cool. Sometimes you just, you have to you laugh theme about it. everything. You have to, well, and you have to laugh ab- about the situation a little bit yeah. because otherwise what's your alternative? Crying? I mean, like, yeah, I want to cry when you call and check on your insurance and your insurance is like, oh, it looks like it's going to be like a hurricane for you. I think we might want to drop you. Well, that happened to us. So, like, I got a thing like it was we're supposed to renew our insurance. And that was like right before the storm. So on Monday, I get a message or like an email from our insurance agent. And she was like, oh, the insurance company doesn't want to renew your policy, which, by the way, expires tomorrow. Right. Because you your truck was stolen from the house. I'm like, what does my truck being stolen from the house have to do with my homeowner's insurance? Not same policy. Yeah. So she's like, well, they're requiring you to have a monitored alarm system. I'm like, I have a monitored alarm system. Then she messages me back. Yeah, they've decided they're not renewing you. So now you have to go to somebody else who now we're in a pinch because there's a hurricane coming. Yeah. And so we have to pay like $500 more a year than we were going to pay. And she's like, maybe after hurricane season, we can find you and someone else. But this is the only one you've got right now. They've got you. So yeah, I mean, so you're looking for levity wherever you can. So a hurricane party. A hurricane party of sorts. (laughs) So, um, but it is a good opportunity for us to go through whatever we do have stockpiled and use it. I mean, even if you live someplace where power outages aren't a terrible, you know, bother and you don't have a bunch of like, you know, like storms or tornadoes or winter issues. You need to be prepared for the zombie apocalypse though. Exactly. But prepared. Obviously. Um, with Stevia alone, right? Or Zevia. <laughs> Zevia. Um, but I think it's always good to, to be like, okay, we have a lot of canned tuna fish. We should probably eat that because that our habit is have it, but like don't necessarily eat it. If you can ha- get to the store easily. Yeah. And just go buy well, some fresh Well, you food. have the canned tuna fish. It's in the, well, we don't have really canned tuna fish. We keep canned chicken. I'm not a tuna fish eater. Well, so we have a couple of cans yeah, of tuna fish, but not a lot. You get that new stuff. I got the new stuff. But yeah, we have it in there. And then what happens is you go to Costco and you're shopping or you go to Publix and you're shopping. You know what I feel like today? I feel like I'm going to have a chicken crust pizza. And you'll say to me, do we have any chicken? I'm pretty sure we do. Let's get a can just in case. And then you go home and instead of pulling the can that's in the back of the cabinet out, you just use the can you just bought. Yeah. So it's nice to, to kind of revert to... Having the policy of first in, first out. Yeah, because we're like that with meal prep. A lot of times, like like just this week, he made chili, he made lasagna, and and we're like, what else is there besides chili and lasagna? 
There doesn't need to be anything else except I made except three for meal preps. I made one on Monday and I made lasagna. two on Tuesday. Eat that. By Tuesday, I'm, as I'm making the lasagna, Rachel's like, well, let's give the kids the lasagna. I'm like, no, no, no. They have meal prep that I made yesterday. So what happens but if I make new. too much of it, like at the end of the week, the stuff I made at the beginning of the week, that's still sitting there because they've eaten the newer stuff. Yeah. So the new policy is... I'm not making more stuff until everything in there is gone. Oh, it's eight days old. Tough. You're eating it. You should have Ew. eaten it when it was made. Gross. It sounds bad, but it gets frustrating. I hate making food and having it go in the garbage just because we want something new. He's an old man. This is old man talk. You get that way too. By the way, speaking of themes, what's with the unicorn hat? The un- Oh, the you unicorn. You did not go to church with that I this did morning. not, but... um. A lovely lady at church uh, realized it was my birthday on this Tuesday. coming Tuesday on September 3rd. And she was You're like, You're going to be 21, right? Wouldn't that be great? 21, but with some significant practice. No, how old am I going to be? 43. 43 years old. 43 years young. 21 times 2 plus 1. Let's stop doing math on that. <laughs> but she was like, you know what? You look like somebody who would want like a unicorn headband. Do you have a unicorn headband? And I was like, I do not, surprisingly enough, own a unicorn headband with a horn on it. And so now I do. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, I was super excited when I saw it. I was like, oh my gosh. You could do the Squatty Potty commercial now. Remember that? Have we you had guys one. ever seen the Squatty Potty commercial? <laughs> This is where your ice cream comes from. Oh. The creamy poop of a mystic unicorn. Oh, Squatty Potty. You fill me with endless joy. Yet leave me empty. We had one, but it gets like, I don't know. We It really it was dusty. a great thing, but it didn't clean well. It didn't. Not, now, you weren't pooping on it, no. but just like your feet up on it. And like You're doing it, it wrong. It had like... It had like those the little rough area so that your feet don't slip. Like, why do you need your feet not to slip when you're sitting down? Is yeah. I don't understand. It's a huge falling hazard. <laughs> but yeah, it just got to the point where like, yeah, it's too dirty, and it was like in the way because it didn't tuck all the way under the toilet. No. And then we our our bathroom door swings in and hits the toilet. So now you had to take this thing and move it to the other side of the room. It yeah, it just was it was just weird and awkward. So instead, I just want to sit up on the toilet like this and hold yeah. my feet up. Uh. <laughs> wow! Please always lock the door because I do not want to walk in on that. Let's go back to the hurricane thing because I am yes. a little frustrated with the whole hurricane thing. So they've been saying since like Tuesday, be prepared. You got to go get everything. By Wednesday, we couldn't find gas. No. Right? Everything is sold out. Wednesday night, you took the kids to youth group. Mm-hmm. I had to go to um, Home Depot to get something because they were that doing something for church. Now, that was Wednesday. Completely forgetting that we were like a week out from a hurricane. It was a nightmare. I'm trying to buy a quarter inch piece of plywood and like they're buying everything in the store. The lines. The lines are ridiculous. But then on Thursday, good luck finding anything, right? Try to go to Aldi's like there's like 100 people online. There's not a loaf of bread anywhere. Now, granted, we're still six days out from a hurricane. Right. You're going to buy bread on Thursday. It's not any good by Tuesday when the storm actually is going to hit. How many peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are you planning on consuming? But, like, but it is a little annoying. I sometimes think it was better like when my dad was a kid and when your mom was young. And you didn't have all of this notice. This, like, we can tell you in three weeks that there may be a storm that's going to be within 500 miles of your house. Well, it's, it's yeah. I mean, I think that early detection is an awesome thing. I'm sure that people who are in, like, a tornado alley would love to have, like, early detection. The problem is all of this speculation and... That they don't know what's really going on. And the craziness that accompanies having this long amount of time and thinking, oh my goodness, I have a long news cycle where I'm going to have everybody's attention. Suddenly everybody's watching the news again after not watching so the news. So it's, it's really like, I'm all for early detection. Can we just have an early detection alarm like in my personal house that I don't have to turn on the media? Because it's the media who's doing it. Yeah. Right? So since Thursday, 
it's twenty four seven like hurricane coverage. And it's and you and depending for a storm on, again that's not hitting for six days. Well, and so what happens is is it keeps going back and forth. So it's like, oh my gosh, we're gonna die. No, maybe we won't get anything. No, seriously, we're gonna die. Like it's very crazy right so you're like okay i feel relieved start taking down the shutters aren't you glad you don't take down the shutters every time they say no you're fine you're not in the cone and then the next morning it's like everybody should freak out why are you not freaking out i thought it was funny because mindy in our facebook group she had had her shutters up and she was like i can't take the dark i'm sitting there going i love the dark can i leave them up all year round without getting a violation from code enforcement you would put it in the front. We usually have them in the back, but you'd have them in the front. I'd have them in the front if we could. I like living in the dark. <laughs> but no, it is, It they do. They drive you insane and it's going back and forth and nobody, I mean, again, on Friday, you could not find gas. Every single gas station is sold out. Now, Sunday, there's no lines for gas. Here's the problem. We're still three days out on the storm. So now you all went and loaded up all of your gas on Friday Your gas tank's probably empty now. Yeah. So now we got to go through it all again anyway. I guess we are like, what, rejuvenating the economy because everybody's spending a bunch of money. Of course, I I was talking to um, uh, one person at a grocery store and they said that after the storm is over, the lines for refunds are long because everybody takes Everybody starts returning everything back. And I'm like, they take it back? I don't think I've ever returned like canned goods. Have you? No. And we've returned a lot of stuff. But again, like we said in that video, like on our like being prepared video, like different keto foods, we don't buy stuff that we're not going to eat. The only thing that we literally showed in that entire video that we don't use on a regular basis is instant coffee. Everything else in there we use. Now we may have canned chicken or canned tuna and only use like one or two cans a month, but... All of that stuff is stuff that we're going to eat. Yeah. Right? It's all stuff that we're going to use over the next couple of months. And what all we do is we constantly replenish it with the first in, first out philosophy. But I will say that when we were, before keto, we, I was just as guilty at buying like a bunch of like that Chef Boyardee stuff that like really was never tasty. That you, don't, you would rather starve than eat anyway. And so I can remember after a storm would like pass and you still got like tons of this like fake spaghetti and meatballs in a can that always had a very like irony, like tinge of like, I don't know. You never wanted to throw that stuff up, right? right. Because it was like, ugh. Um, I would ask the kids, you want that as a side dish tonight? No, <laughs> no, no, I'm good. Now I will say though, you know, the last storm where we lost power, which was when I had been, only been doing keto for seven or eight months, and that's when I bought all those Atkins bars. Right. But you gotta remember, like, I know a couple people actually commented, like, why would you even bought Atkins bars? Back then, when I first started keto, you didn't have all those keto products you saw yesterday or this morning, like, they didn't exist. Like well, there mean, were there were no perfect keto bars. No, the only keto one bars. that was even on the market was keto bars, and that was brand new product. Like yeah. it took a long time to get them. They came in a Chinese box that was just a white box, like plastic wrap. Mm-hmm. There was no label on it. Like you, there was nothing. So if you wanted keto foods, I mean, you had canned chicken and stuff. But honestly, like nobody else in the house was doing keto at the time no. either. It was only me. And so the easiest thing that I could think of was like, I'm going to just have Atkins bars, but we had so many cause we didn't, we did go like seven days without electric. That yeah. time. But when I was done, probably within three weeks after we got our power back is when I started learning like, Hey, Atkins bars aren't that good for you. And you, you weren't feeling great. And I wasn't feeling super great. The, what we had left sat in the house for like four months. Like the kids were slowly eating them as a snack food. Like, hey, I'm so I'm hungry. Can I have a granola bar? Well, we don't have any granola bars, but we have an Atkins well, bar. Let me show you what we do have. I think we finally did end up just throwing them out, like long past the expiration. Date. Yeah, they got to go. So, um, what else is going on this week? We did our meal prep. We did our hurricane prep. Unfortunately, they postponed the mix and mingle, which I have a feeling was a little early. 
because it doesn't even look like the storm's going to affect Miami at all. Yeah. But now they moved it till the end of October, and we can't go. We can't go. So I'm kind of bummed. I gave back football games, so I could have worked football this coming weekend, because now we're not going to the mix and mingle, and we can't go to the one in October, so we're out that money. So that kind of stinks. Ooh, somebody's messaging me. I don't know. So, um, we did all of that. Oh, I wanted to talk about our... Um, thing with Keto Savage. Yes. So we're going to do, we're starting with the reverse diet. So what Robert wants us to do, if you saw that video, is he wants us to put weight on or put calories on to then take them off. Oh. Now, if you didn't see that, if you didn't see that video, I'll leave it over Rachel's head. I'll link for that. So basically what we're going to do is the whole idea of this is we're going to try to speed up our metabolism. Yes. So currently, Rachel's eating about 1,500 calories. I'm eating about, I was eating about 2,000. For the last two or three weeks, I've been eating about 2,150, and I've slowly been putting weight on doing this. So I'm not super excited about increasing calories. Yeah. So the idea is to get me up to, if I remember, he said somewhere around 27 or 2,800. Okay. And he wants to get you up to about 1,800 or something like Yay! that. Maybe 1,900 calories. Jazz hands. So what we're going to be doing is slowly increasing our calories over the next two to three months. Then we're going to hold steady there for a couple of weeks. And then we're going to start decreasing. So good things and bad things about this is that we are going to get to eat more food. I like that. But there is a possibility, he said a strong possibility, that we will be gaining weight as we do this. <laughs> but then the end result is then you're going to lose weight again. Okay. Because then you're going to start luring it back. But you, he, he said you should lose it even quicker because now you're you're going to be lowering the calories after your body's in a high, operating at a higher thing. But the the whole end result should be when you're done losing your weight or being at your weight, you're sp we should be able to be at a higher metabolism and thus eating more food. So it's going to be interesting. We're actually going to be following Robert's um, Deeper State Keto Program. Oh, okay. So I'm, I will leave a link for that down below. We're not associated with it at all, but I'm just really interested to see how this works for us with people who are older because we have screwed our metabolisms up so bad. We are. Like, it's funny. A as lot of active as we are. We should be able to eat more calories than we're eating. Oh, absolutely. And it's funny, a lot of the people I see in, you know, these later generations, their first thing is is to be like working out, exercising, moving more as far as like if they're wanting to tone their body or change their body in some way. Th their first response is, I need to get out and get moving more. My generation, like my res first response is stop eating. Right. Right. It's a very different and approach. And honestly, neither one of them works. Yeah. Okay, here's why. If you stop eating like we did and you cut your calories, and we'll talk about this as when we do our challenge video, but if you just cut your calories, eventually, like Robert was saying- You don't have anywhere you, to go. You don't have anywhere to go. So you start at 1,500 or 1,700, you cut to 1,500, you cut to 1,200, you cut to 1,000. Well, how much lower are you going to go? You went all the way down to five to six hundred. How low can you go? You can't how recover low from can it. Can you go pretty low? Yeah, as it turns out. But now, then you started putting the weight back on. Now, on the other side, great. You're going to do all this exercise, all this exercise, all this exercise. What happens when you stop exercising? Flab city. <laughs> right. So, and that's what happens with you know the people. Remember the old Biggest Loser show. All of those people gained their weight back for the most part. Why? What were they doing? They were cutting the calories and doing all that exercise. So the second they got home and their life wasn't don't eat and exercise because all day Because who has long. that much time to like concentrate all of their energy, all of their attention to that? Yeah. Most of them ended up putting their weight back on and more. Yeah. Because the goal is to get fit and healthy and then go out and have a life. Right. Not get fit and healthy and you better like stay in the gym 24 hours a day to sustain it. Right. That's crazy. Yeah, so I can't, I'm excited for that. So we were gonna start on September 1st, but in light of the storm and in light of Rachel's birthday, which I don't understand. She's like, I don't wanna be doing a challenge for my birthday. I'm like, you're getting to eat more. I don't understand what we're well, complaining I, about. I just don't but... want to have to think about anything. Right. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, it makes sense. I just don't so wanna So we're gonna start it. it on Wednesday, which is September 4th. 4th. 
We're going to start it there. And then what we're going to do is we'll probably make a video for this is what our starting weights are. We'll do our starting measurements. And then I, I don't know if we're going to do a video every week, but every couple of weeks we'll kind of do an update. This is how I'm feeling. This is where I'm at it with the scale. This is like, have I lost any inches? Have I gained any inches? Yeah. Like this is what we're eating kind of stuff along with all of our other videos and stuff. I like it. Sound good? Sounds good. You want to do comments and stuff? Yes, please. Okay. Do we have a subscriber of the week? Yes, we do. We have two subscriber of the week. Yay! And we have a lot of comments. Awesome. So we're going to try to get through these because there were some good stuff. So the first subscriber of the week is Carol. Hi, Carol. And I will put Carol's picture up here. She doesn't have a before and after, just like an after. And she said, I started eating keto in January, not for weight loss, but for mental clarity, anti-inflammatory benefits. I was nice. diagnosed with fibromyalgia a number of years ago. At 59 years old, I also care for my three grandkids four days and evenings a week where good health and mental clarity are vital. Heck yes, it is. I prayed and thought God would instantly heal me, but he had something better in mind. Seven months later, I feel better than I have since my teens and was surprised that I've dropped 17 pounds. Goodbye, wow. muffin top and back fat. She does not look 59 years there old. There is no way this woman is 59 years old. She does not look 59 years old. Carol, you look incredible. Congratulations. How is she a grandma? I don't know. but Oh, my gracious. I can see, like, if you look all the way in the background, though, I'm assuming that is her, and you can see a difference in the way. Do you see that picture on her mantle? Oh, yeah, I see that. She looks like a heavier face in there. So, but, yeah, you can see. Amazing. She didn't give us a before and after picture, but she sort of did. Man, well, what if it's somebody different and we just insulted them? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so the next one is amazing. Jamie. Hi, Jamie. And I'll put Jamie's pictures up here. She wrote, I posted last week that I was a little anxious to get the results of my quarterly lab test from my doctor. I am happy, happy to report that I'm considering the numbers. I got back a huge NSV. Like non-scale victory. Yep. To many of you, the numbers won't mean that much, but for those also recovering from type 2 diabetes, I'm going to share with you the numbers of my journey to health after having been diagnosed with diabetes in May of 2018. Wow. I'm not done yet. I still have some weight to lose and at least another three-tenths of a point to shave off my A1C but I'm uh, before I'm remotely satisfied, but I'm so much better than when I started. Aww. If you were just starting out, believe me, you got this. If I can do it, anybody can. I was so incredibly carb addicted when I began, but I didn't think I'd ever find a better way, but I did and you will too. And uh, wow. I've got her lab results here. I won't bother putting them up, but just looking at these like, yes. Jamie, you should be a, like super proud. A fasting glucose from 267 to 113. Amazing. An A1C from 10.7 to 5.9. Um, now, the funny part is, is people would wow. look at these cholesterol and be like, oh my gosh, something is wrong. But she's got like her, her cholesterol from November was like 212 to now it's 237 for total cholesterol. And her HDL is from 49 to a 65, and her LDL went from 135 to 158. So your people are going to be like, oh my gosh, I went up. Yeah. But if you figure out her remnant cholesterol, it yes. drops from, looks like from somewhere around 50 to like 14. That is huge. And triglycerides from a 141 to a 71. Amazing. So, wow. And you look wow. incredible. Yes. I mean, how about a, a weight of... 329 to 236. Wow. A BMI of 53 to 38. Fantastic. So amazing. Congratulations, Congratulations. Jamie. That is a hard-fought success. Yes. So, yeah, I would consider that a lot more than just a non-scale victory. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's like an all-scale victory, like every scale. Yes. Okay, so comments. So Scott wrote. Hey, Scott. What kind of football league are you in? Um, I don't play football. I am a high school and youth league football official. Mm -hmm. Which I think is worse because we get yelled at. I can't even go. I can't watch it. Yeah, Rachel used to go to my games and she won't go anymore. Especially after like Anthony and John Paul started officiating. Because she's like, you're it yelling was at bad enough kids. to get you get yelled at. Yeah. But yeah, I think you're, the final straw for you was you came to a youth league game and John Paul and I got chased off the field by parents. Yes. Right. We went with our friend and Rachel was in the stands talking to my friend who was also officiating with me. 
and the two wives just sitting there talking. We're just la la la. And, and my friend and I are sitting down. The game is over. Like we're getting literally chased to the car, and we're like, "Let's go!" And get she, in the car, like, woman. What's the big deal? Like, what's Will going on? Will you just stop talking, please? I just see two zebras like in the distance, starting to run, and this giant crowd of people behind them, like chasing them. That was the last game you ever went to. That was it. Okay, so um, he also wrote, you guys should have 50,000 followers. You're one of the best keto channels. Why? Because you're down to earth, silly, real, and I want you to be my next door neighbor. I want to go to your church and I'm Jewish. Ah, Scott, well, thank you. Well, what thank a, you. What a high compliment. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. You can come to church anytime. Yes. Uh, Lisa wrote, Hey, Lisa. I just love to watch you too. I have basically been binge watching your channel for about two weeks. Wow. I grew up in an alcoholic family, and for some reason, I don't like to drink, but I am definitely a foodie. And it's not the healthy food. Eight years ago, I went through lap band surgery. Well, say what you want, but if you don't take care of yourself and eat right, you will gain weight. I discovered the keto lifestyle about a year ago, and you guys are really helping me through my little slump. God bless you both. Loving me some liverwurst. Thank you both so much. Oh, Lisa, liver worse. It's the worst. No, that's awesome. Well, I, congratulations on like just your forward momentum. And thank you so much for bringing us along for the journey. Yes. So we have a bunch of comments on people of why um, we asked last week, like, what was your why? Why are you doing keto? Okay. So Paul wrote, hey, LOL, Paul. I'm down 250 to 205. And wow. the older ladies at my church say, don't lose any more weight. In case I get sick. You had that same I had that. Somebody morning. say that to me. And it's funny because when we went to KetoCon, we were talking to Dr. Barry and I was mentioning to him and he's like, yes. He was like, that was the old school way of thinking that you always had to maintain an extra 20 pounds of fat on your body in case you get sick. And his, it was like that was supposed to be cancer weight. Yeah. So like, yeah, twenty keep twenty pounds on because cancer. Yeah. Like that. What? The twenty pounds may be causing the cancer though. What kind of plan is that? But that's just the old school way of thinking. It's just unfortunate. Need fat that disease can eat off. So Jason wrote. Hey Jason. He is my grandson. So Jason, last week we put up the picture. Jason. I had a feeling that was your grandson, and Rachel and I, when we were filming that, I looked you at her. You look so young, And though. I said, you know what? There's no way. He doesn't look old enough for that to be his grandson. It's got to be his son. We actually cut out a part where I said, if this is your grandson, I'm sorry. I cut it out because you, it's like, there's no way that's Jason, his grandson. Jason, you look incredible. Like, you look so, so young. You definitely look young enough that that was your son. Oh, my gosh. So, we are sorry, but you look awesome. You look amazing. Uh, Rosie wrote, Hey Rosie. When I decided to follow the keto lifestyle, I told myself that this was for my health first. I have 45 pounds to lose, but my health needs to come first. Yeah. The body aches and the inflammation need to go away. I must heal. Weight loss is just going to be the payback. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, making the switch to a lot of the anti-inflammatory oils and just like you're eating whole food versus like, you know, all of the processed food and even all of the things that are in the what we call the middle aisles because we do a lot of sh just with the keto lifestyle you're just naturally shopping in the outer aisle in fact right isn't there an entire brand of like cauliflower crust that's called like the outer aisle yes because, because that's where we shop you're getting rid of all of those extra chemicals and things to make um food shelf stable for 20 years and all of that is going to affect your health right in a in an a positive way. Yeah, it's funny. I was recently talking to someone and they were asking me about like keto baked goods, keto desserts and stuff. And I'm like, you have to keep them in the refrigerator. And they're like, well, that's such a pain. I'm like, shouldn't it like make like, do you really want to have something that's made with like eggs and butter and cream, like not go bad when you sit it on your counter for three weeks? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I'm happy to store it in my refrigerator. I can remember when Twinkies were the only like thing that were supposed to last that long. Yeah. Now there's plenty of stuff. Like you look at the boxes and you're like good till 2022 and it's like, "Oh my lord, you're a cookie. Why are you why are you able to last like several years?" I was just recently listening to a message from Stephen Furtick. It was like from a couple weeks ago and he was talking about like I love his Furtick. his wife was actually giving him food that he was like, the expiration date's expired. And she's like, oh, you always eat that. That's just a suggestion date. Isn't that what I always say to you? It's just a suggestion, which it is just a suggestion. Other than baby formula, 
And in certain states, milk exp- expiration dates are just determined by the company. Mm. They're not determined by our government. So I still don't want to eat something that's like packaged. Maybe maybe you put on the packaged by date and then let me decide, right? That I like, I can get on board with. High five. I can get on board. It's like eggs. Eggs are actually good for 60 days from when they put them in the carton. So instead of telling me like use by, just put packaged by, packaged on. And yeah. some some better egg companies will do that. It'll say, it'll say like packaged on. Right. So don't I don't necessarily need to know that these that these cookies are good until 2022, but I would like to know if they were packaged in 1997. Or just the fresh by date. So fresh by means it's not bad if you eat it after. It's just not optimal freshness. Maybe a little stale, which I don't mind certain things stale. Ew. <laughs> Make good choices. Kathy wrote. Hey, Kathy. Two smoking hot ketos. Aw. Nice picks. I'm doing keto because first I need to lose weight, but most of all, it makes me feel amazing both mentally and physically. I love mental clarity. Yes. That I am really enjoying. And the older I get, the more precious it is. Yeah. And I think like Dr. Berg says it best. He's like, listen, you're not doing keto to lose weight. You're doing keto to get healthy and getting healthy will help you lose weight. Yeah. I think that's the best way to put it. Exactly. Yep. Uh, Carrie wrote, Hey, Carrie. As a healthcare provider, I need to be a good example for my patients. Wow, that is awesome. I love that. That's a great thing. That is great. They say, you know, for parents, make sure your your kids catch you reading for entertainment. Yep. You know, I, I mean, that is awesome. I love that that way of thinking. Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of feel that way too. I want to make sure that I stay on plan so that if... If I'm saying to you, like, hey, if you want to enjoy a better life, stay on plan, on your own plan. I never made sense of years ago when I was growing up, you'd go to the hospital and you see all the doctors outside smoking going, don't smoke. Yeah. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> the Janice wrote. Hey, Janice. Hey, Rachel and Joe. I'm doing keto because of my beautiful granddaughters. Oh. I have three of them. Oh, that's awesome. That is a great reason. That yep. is a great incentive. So Jane wrote, Hey Jane. My husband and I have been doing keto since January. Our goal is to get healthier. We're in our early 50s and we have grandchildren to be around longer to enjoy. Yes. Oh my goodness. So my mom was in her 50s when Caleb was born. And boy, they have enjoyed their time together. And I spent a lot of time with my grandparents on my mom's side too. And I wouldn't trade those memories that I've made for them with them for, for anything. Yeah. So, um, yes, live a long time. Be there for your kids. Be there for your grandkids. And be able to enjoy them. Not just, I remember my grandparents, but they were sick all the time. Right. Remember your grandparents, and we were out whitewater rafting. <laughs> that kind of memory. Cheryl wrote, Hey, Cheryl. My why is to avoid the agony that my husband went through with diabetes, kidney dialysis, and CHF, which has basically held him hostage until his death a year ago. I wish I would have known about keto five years ago. Oh my goodness, Cheryl, I am so sorry for your loss. Um, I totally echo what you're saying. I wish that we knew about keto before 2014 and we wouldn't have lost my dad. I'm, yep. I'm convinced of it. If we, we would have put the pressure on him like, you know, like we did for my mom, like, hey, you're getting healthy. I, right. I, I wish we could turn back time, but but moving forward, I'm really glad that, that you're living this keto lifestyle and we're gonna get to keep you around for a long time. Yeah. So Watermelon Pocky wrote, Hey, Watermelon Pocky. The reason for doing keto for me was to be able to have kids. The weight loss was that extra on the side that came with it. I've been cleared for weeks now by my doctor to have children. Wow. That is awesome. Oh my gosh, I'm going to start crying. That is precious. Well, I am excited. Please tell us when when you find out you're going to have some babies. Wow, what a great goal to have. Yep. Man, to think that maybe a door is closed in your life and to then see it open like yeah. this. Wow. Congratulations. Sylvia wrote. Hey, Sylvia. Joe, what's wrong with tuna? I just don't like it. It's from when I was a kid. You were like, like forced to eat it. Yes. How about some good homemade blood sausage fried in the pan with some onions and sauerkraut? Yum, yum. I think he, Rachel needs to try this delicacy. Wink, wink. Next week, meal prep suggestion. I also love to meal prep. Few hours spent in the kitchen or on the smoker or on Sunday makes the week very easy. Just heat up and add a side and you're done. This gives me more time to cook for my husband that never knows what he wants to eat. <laughs> never eats the food I cook for myself and does not like to eat the same thing two days in a row. It drives me crazy. That drives me crazy too. I know. This year, like no other, I'm looking forward to Christmas. First time in 18 years since my move to the United States, I'm actually going to go home for Christmas 
and spend it with my mom, dad, and sister. That is beautiful. I'm so glad that you're going to get to spend time with your family. But man, that meal prep, <laughs> that, that blood sausage. We got a theme going here. Don't worry. Oof. 10 Carb Kim wrote. Hey, 10 Carb Kim. Let's repulse Rachel and keep talking about liverwurst. No. My aunt studied abroad in college. She married a German and has lived in Sprig for 40 years. When I was a child, they came to Virginia, and I had my first taste of liverwurst and lard sandwich. Ooh. Now, you kind of lost me there, Kim. Liverwurst and lard. I'm on board with the liverwurst, but liverwurst and lard? I don't know about that one. I feel like the sound would just be like, right? Like that, oh, wow. Rachel wrote. Hey, Rachel. Rachel, have Joe mix Braunschweiger with cream cheese. It's delightful. On a chaffle. I don't know about Rachel, all this. we're going to do that for you. No! What? No! What is that? It is liverwurst with cream cheese on a chaffle. Oh my god. She really did not know I did this. What is I did wrong it before she got home from church. What is wrong with you? Nothing. You ready? Look, I even have a drink for you to like... I saved some of my iced tea. Oh my Are lord. Are you ready? Maybe. Liverwurst cream cheese on a chaffle. Sounds good. Never had this before. <sighs> I really appreciate the cream cheese. <laughs> I'm proud wow. of you. Wow. We can finish that later. It's actually not bad. It's not bad. I'm, I'm not sure if it's because I haven't eaten. Like, I had a coffee this morning at 3 o'clock in the morning, and that's it. And it's like, what time is it now? 4. I don't know. Am I just really hungry, or is this it's not terrible? Good. Wow. You want to save it for later so they don't have to watch us eat the whole time? It tastes like really... Beefy bologna. Mm -hmm. It really tastes. Except for it's pig liver. <laughs> he just ruined it. So you eat your liverwurst on camera. It's actually not bad. I told you it was actually pretty good. The cream cheese is a cool addition. The, Thank you, Rachel. The cream cheese, I think, is making it for me. That was really good. Okay, so Sherry wrote. Hey, Sherry. Rachel, I'm with you on Christmas. I have Christmas socks I wear year-round. Joe, your coaching job sounds like a day at the jail I work at. We're Aww. always hiring if you need <laughs> need a job. Aww. Thanks for sharing all the amazing photos and your stories of your subscribers. You are truly inspiring. Yeah, like I said, oh, I'm not coaching. I'm like officiating. But yeah, it gets really bad. You know, especially like some of the parents just get out of control. And the younger the kids are, the worse it usually is. I think aside from getting healthy for your loved ones. I think the next thing to, for us to tackle is just treat like creating an atmosphere of kindness and respect for everybody. Just right. just be kinder than you need to be. Like just be more patient than you than a person deserves and and let's just talk to one another with respect. That's something I need to work on. Cra <laughs> you're not bad. It's not like you're yelling at anybody, but it's just crazy. Cat K Keto Review wrote, Hey, Cat K. I finish all my Christmas shopping before September, so I love it. It's perfect. That is brilliant. And you probably save a ton of money. So we've got a bunch of suggestions here on how to decorate our Christmas tree. Yay! Are you ready? Yes. Yvette wrote, Oh hey, my Yvette. goodness. I am so glad I watched this. I completely forgot that we do not have a Christmas tree anymore either. We ordered one online after Christmas, and the place ran out, so we never got one. We're in, Yvette, we're in the same situation, so if you run across a sale on one that, like, it's like six and a half feet, yeah. that kind of size, let us know. Yes. Hook a sister up. Uh, Misty wrote. Hey, Misty. We keep a tree up all year long and decorate it according to the season. Please don't give her any ideas. Oh, my goodness. Our house is already decorated for fall year round, with the exception of Christmas time. I love to always like kind of have an atmosphere of thankfulness. I think that that's like a year round thing. But I love the idea. Like so, today we did like because it's Labor Day this weekend. I've got like I'm all decked out with red, white, and blue everywhere. So can you imagine if we could have an Easter tree? If we could have a Fourth of July tree? No, I really can't. 
Halloween tree. The cats are always going to be on it, and Tabitha's going to be eating all the ornaments off the bottom. Yeah, well. Noelle and Beth wrote... Hey, Miss Beth. I would do a Peanuts-themed Christmas tree. I love Snoopy. You would love that because you could buy a tree that's just like a Charlie Brown tree. Yes. That'd be cheap. Sherry wrote... Hey, Sherry. Do a keto-themed Christmas tree. That would be cute. Like bacon and eggs. Yeah. Avocados. Uh, Keto Non wrote... Hey, Keto Non. A keto tree. LOL. Avocado, cows, chickens, fish. Ha ha. Dress up Christmases. I actually think that uh, like the cows and chickens would be... I could find ornaments. I think there'd be a variety of ornaments for that. Jane wrote... Hey, Jane. Why not a bacon and egg themed tree? Or better yet, bacon, egg, and avocado. I love it. Great I don't know. Lines. I'm sensing a theme here. I, I am sensing a theme. Karen wrote, hey, do Karen. a keto tree. LOL. Food ornaments. Hang jerky instead of candy canes. I like that. Oh my goodness. LOL. My daughter loves Nightmare Before Christmas and I'm thinking about doing a small themed tree for her this year. That's nice. We currently have blue and silver tree theme with a snowman ribbon. That is adorable, but I would love like a Nightmare Before Christmas tree. You talk about like going broke though, getting all those Nightmare Before Christmas ornaments. Oh, they're so cute though. Nancy wrote, Hey, Nancy. My tree is a Dachshund tree. How cute. Every year I get a new ornament. Walking in Wiener Wonderland. Woof, woof. Oh, my gosh. That's so stinking cute. Oh, my goodness. I love that. Misty wrote, Hey, Misty. It's a tree and a cat toy. It is. We had a cat when we first got married that lived in that tree, in our Roscoe, tree. Roscoe, when I first got Roscoe, I, I'll put a picture if I can find it up here. He literally, he was only like, three months old and he was like living inside a tree. I have a picture of him like inside the tree. Yeah. Um, Rachel wrote, Hey Rachel. Do a comic theme. Start <gasps> saving the funnies from the newspaper. Ooh, that's smart. I would love a comic theme one. I love that. Keto on a budget wrote, hey, Keto on a budget. avocado shaped tree with bacon and egg ornaments. How cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. I gotta start looking for these. Lisa wrote, do hey, an Lisa. avocado Christmas tree. It would be fun. You know, if you you could probably do them like pine co- or would they go bad? If no, they would go bad. They will go bad because that would have been cool, right? Like if you could just leave it for the whole season, like if you put pine cones and do avocados instead. How cute! Christine wrote hey, all Christine. avocados. Great minds think alike. Kathleen wrote hey, iguanas. Kathleen. Do an iguana themed Christmas tree. No, ma'am. Oh my, can you imagine? We we would have no problem collecting all of the necessary ornaments. We have- We can get iguana eggs. Ew. Then they can hatch during Christmas season. What is wrong with you? So when you went to your game this week, Caleb comes out and I said, oh my goodness. And I'm like staring. Coming in the garage is one of those curly tail lizards. Oh, the big ones? That thinks that, I mean, they are so entitled, right? Like, they do not move. You could be mowing your lawn, and they don't move. They just will step over and then step right back, right? Anthony and I were cutting a couple in the of weeks house. ago. Oh, I'm sorry. It's time to move. Anthony and I were cutting a couple weeks ago this condo down on the beach, and there were two iguanas. Probably one of them was about this big. One of them was about, I don't know, three and a half, four feet long. And they are not afraid of you. I know. And he was like literally chasing it across the parking lot with the weed eater and it wouldn't move. He was like literally like it's walking like this and he's taking the weed eater, tapping it like this to get it to go across to the other side and it wouldn't move. It's just like, yeah, no. And just slowly walking as he's trying to chase. He wasn't hurting. He's just trying to like get it out of there and didn't want to get out of there. Maybe there'll be like a Wizard of Oz effect and they'll like, Blow away in a storm. That would be nice. So Rachel wrote. Hey, Rachel. I think you should create a keto tray. Save some of your keto packaging and fill it with floral foam and hot glue the end. That's smart. You can make paper mache avocados and paint them a dark green. How about that keto cereal? You can hot glue different colors to make a wreath or all over plastic bulbs. How cute. You could run with it and have lots of fun getting super creative. Wow. Those are great ideas. Rachel, that is brilliant. Last one. Debbie W. wrote, Hey, Debbie. Make a subscriber ornament tray. <gasps> Anyone who wants to participate can mail an ornament. Then you can pick a favorite for a keto on the couch spotlight and giveaway. Oh, my gosh. I would totally do I that. I think we need to do that. Let's do that. I think we can do that. So it is, well, it's the first week of, it's September 1st. Yeah. 
So we like to put our tree up in November first, mid November, right? Well, mid November. Yeah, I think we should do that. We should we we should we start that now? Yeah. So we're gonna do. Let's do that. So we're gonna do a subscriber ornament tree. Wow. Now I didn't tell you. You didn't read these comments. I did not. So we're gonna do a subscriber ornament tree. So we our address is down in the description of every single video. Yeah. So mail us any kind of an ornament. It could be a handmade ornament. It could be like something you made. It could be something you buy. The kids make. Something your kids make. Your grandkids make. Yeah. Anything. We'll any hang ornament, it. We will make. All of the ornaments, we are not buying one ornament. We'll get lights, right? A tree with lights and then just ornaments from our... If we have five ornaments, our tree gets five ornaments. Oh, wow. Right? If we have, like, we will find a room. We have 5,000 subscribers, almost 5,000 subscribers, right? We should have um, 10,000 by Christmas. Wow. Like, that's my that's my goal, 10,000 by Christmas. That's a lofty goal, sir. So, so yeah. So, we're just going to load it up with ornaments from subscribers. We're not at 5,000 subscribers. When we are, we're going to have a big giveaway. Yes. Yeah. So we're almost at 5,000 subscribers. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what then we'll do is then we will spotlight some of our favorites on Keto on the Couch. Okay. Okay. Starting in October, we'll pick like a few of our favorites each week to spotlight on Keto on the Couch. And then how about... The second to last week, the second week of Christmas, yeah, we'll do a competition in Keto on the Couch. Which ornament are we? And we'll the pick best? like we'll pick like our ten favorite that we get, our five favorite, and we'll let you guys vote, and then the winner will get a box. I we'll love do it. a giveaway box. Yeah. What is that? What do you think? I think that would be. Did fun. I just completely spit all this or what? Are you are you're so yeah. So here's that's what we're gonna by do. the seat of your pants. That's sir. what we're gonna do. So we're going to we'll we'll figure out all of the details like as we go along. But so starting today, September first, our address is down below. Mail us any kind of Christmas ornament you want. It'll show up on our Christmas tree. We'll collect them. We'll pick out a couple as we're going along, and then towards the the, the end of the holiday season. We'll pick out a bunch of them. You guys vote, and the best per the best one or the one with the most votes will get a uh, a prize, a giveaway box. I love it. That'll be cool. Yes. Good job. That's awesome. Well, that high is five our, to you guys. High five to you guys too. So that is this week's keto on the couch. Thank you for all the comments, all of our comments as we came from keto on the couch last week. So if you have any questions or comments, do us a favor, leave them down below. We will read them on next week's keto on the couch. Yeah. Hopefully, we're still here. We didn't get blown away by a hurricane. Hopefully not. If you like what you saw, do this favor, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. That way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.